Hi, welcome to Pathways to Chemistry. This is Dr. O'Connor, and today we're going to talk about ethers and nucleophilic substitution reactions that ethers undergo, specifically ether cleavage. Now, recall that just like an OH group, an OR group, or an alkoxy group is a very strong base, which means that it's a poor leaving group. So just like an alcohol, an ether needs to be activated before undergoing a nucleophilic substitution reaction. We can accomplish this by protonating the ether. We can use hydrogen bromide or hydrogen iodide. We don't usually use hydrogen chloride because chloride ion is a very poor nucleophile. Now, whether our mechanism follows SM1 or SN2 will depend on the structure of the ether. Before we talk about mechanisms, let's just talk a little bit about ethers. Ethers are probably the least reactive compounds that we've talked about so far. They mainly react with hydrogen halides. And because they're not very reactive, we usually use them as solvents for other organic reactions. Most ethers are hazardous. For example, diethyl ether is very flammable. Ethers also undergo oxidation with air and form explosive peroxides. So we need to store them properly, keeping them away from air. So let's go back to our mechanism here. First, we must heat our reaction mixture, and by heating it, this means that the reaction is going to proceed at a decent rate. Okay, we don't want something that's too slow. So anyway, the uh, cleavage okay, will follow SM1 if a stable carbocation can form. So let's take a look at the SM1 mechanism. So we'll go ahead and react this with hydrogen bromide. Okay. And again, the ether needs to be protonated so that we can convert the alkoxy group into a good leaving group. Here we have protonation, oops, I overdid that, protonation of the ether. And then once the ether is protonated, then again, this is um, an SM1 reaction, okay? The leaving group will depart, and that's going to be in the form of an alcohol. So we have our we have methanol in this case, and of course a carbocation will form. And this is a tertiary carbocation, which is very stable. And these reactions, as long as a carbocation can form, or a stable carbocation can form, these reactions involving the cleavage ether will follow an SM1 mechanism. Okay. And um, so anyway, in this part here then, once the leaving group departs, again we have the alcohol, and then the bromide ion, okay, will combine with our carbocation, and let me pull this down, and we end up with our alkyl halide, and of course, the alcohol. Okay. Now, if a stable carbocation cannot be formed, then the SN2 mechanism will be followed. So let's go ahead and look at diethyl ether. Notice we have a symmetrical ether here, and so of course we would react that with the hydrogen bromide. And so again, the first step is the protonation of the ether. I want to convert that alkoxy group into a good leaving group. There we go. Slow step here. Okay. And of course, we have our alcohol. We end up with our alcohol. And ethyl bromide as our alkyl halide. In this case here, we had a symmetrical ether, 
But what if we had something like this? Well, what's going to happen is the nucleophile, and in this case our bromide ion, will attack the less sterically hindered carbon. So in this case we would end up with methyl bromide and ethanol. Or in these reactions, only the substitution product is formed. Because, think about it, if an alkene formed in an E1 reaction, it would then react with the hydrogen halide to form the alkyl halide that's formed in the substitution reaction. Now, if the alkene were to form in an E2 mechanism, bromide and the iodide ions are weak nucleophiles as well as water and these nucleophiles being weak nucleophiles could not remove a proton so let's take a look here at an example so here I'm going to ask what is the major product with one equivalent of hydrogen bromide okay well, in this case here, let's look at the protonated species. Just jump to that because we know that that is the first step. Let's take a look at which mechanism this reaction will occur by. Well, let's, if we look at our structure here, all right, we have a benzene ring and we see that if a benzyl carbocation would form, that that would be a very stable carbocation. So in this case, this is going to occur by SM1, okay, because that benzyl carbocation is going to be very stable. So at this point here, then, we have our alcohol. Okay, so we have our 1-propanol. And, of course, our carbocation. Let me move this over just a little bit so you can see. Our benzyl cation here. Sorry, that doesn't look the greatest. And, of course, the bromide ion. So, in this case, then, our product will be our products will be the 1-propanol and here is our halide that forms. Okay. Now, in this example, it was stated what is the major product if the ether is heated with one equivalent of hydrogen bromide. So we get both the halide and we get the alcohol. But what if this reaction mixture would have been heated with excess hydrogen bromide? Well, in that case, we would end up with two alkyl halides. What would happen is if we had excess hydrogen bromide, the alcohol that's formed as a product would then react with the hydrogen bromide to form another alkyl halide. So in this case, we would have two alkyl halides form. Up here, if we would have had excess hydrogen bromide, then of course the only alkyl halide that would form would be the ethyl bromide. Other reagents that could be used to activate an alcohol so that they'll undergo these substitution reactions. One of them was phosphorus trichloride. But these types of compounds cannot be used to activate an ether. Remember that an alcohol will form an intermediate that is able to lose a proton, which means that a very stable sulfonate ester can be formed. Now in the case of an ether, 
the intermediate that's formed does not have a proton that can be lost. So in this case, the intermediate, because it cannot lose a proton, would not be able to form the more stable product, in this case, a sulfonate ester. So these types of compounds cannot be used to activate an ether.